We're currently looking at a Stromberg Carlson XY step-by-step uh, -step system. Uh, Stromberg, of course, uh, was one of the leading manufacturers. You had Western Electric, Automatic Electric, and Stromberg Carlson were three major uh, equipment providers in the United States, as well as North Electric out of Galleon, Ohio. This is a, a common equipment board. We have uh, vacuum tube tone generators. And we have our working and redundant, so if A2 was to fail, there's monitoring circuits, uh, monitoring the dial tone. We take a continuous tone from the tone generator and feed it to the interrupter, so you would have the same tone for your busy and reorder as you do your dial tone. And if we were to have a fuse operator, we'd bring in a fuse alarm, letting us know that there is an issue in the central office. We're currently looking at the interrupter. We have the primary interrupter, the standby interrupter, and then of course this is currently my ringing supply. This is a vibrator tuned uh, forks which are taking DC and they're um, interrupting and making a pulsating DC at 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. Currently have a 20 hertz, 30, 40, 50, and 60, and we're using the 20 hertz to provide ring back of the connector. The interrupter right now is of course interrupting each of these frequencies, and there's a marking lead which is uh, coming from these relays to synchronize the ringing of this device with the. Uh, particular telephone number you dial because I can have 10 party phone lines, five frequencies on the tip side, five frequencies in the ring side, and the ringing is all being done in one lead. So they're sending uh, pulses out or a pulse out in conjunction with the ringing and depending on the mainframe what I tie down for the ringing code to determine which frequency is rung at that particular moment. We're currently looking at the XY switch itself. This is a universal switch. Uh, this switch can be used as a line finder, a selector, or a connector. Depending on what the end of it is plugged into would determine what the function of the switch is. If this was being used as a selector and a subscriber was to dial a digit 5 for an example you would step this switch over to the fifth position and then it would automatically on its own start looking for a vacant path to the next switch or a trunk then you would be connected to an alike switch on another shelf if you was accessing another selector if you access the trunk it would only be this device plus a line finder at the end of the telephone call when a customer hung up the switch would return to home position and then of course that link is ready for the next customer to use I have an XY switch mounted in a test box this was an item used for adjusting the switch and checking the speed. I will let it step the X direction, now the Y. We're currently looking at the bank blocks of my fifth selector shelf. This is shelf A and shelf B in this configuration. And all of the levels and uh, trunks off of each bank, this particular set of switches accesses this bank 
this particular set of switches accesses this bank are all wired. In this case, we have very limited uh, wiring out here. These are the, of course, the fifth selector, so I have the 6100 group for the connector shelf one, and then the 6300 group for connector shelf number two, and the remaining terminals are all strapped out to ground, so if you used to dial a 6465 or whatever, you would just get 120 IPM reorder time. We're currently looking at the line group. This is a 100 line lockout line group, which means each line has uh, three relays associated with it. We're going to be connected to these three relays right here. So when I go off hook, we will operate uh, the line and cutoff relay. Also over here is some of the control relays for the uh, lotter and the line finder. And each uh, XY switch has got an additional relay, which is... Um, used for stepping the allotter and operating the line finder. So I'll make a, uh, an on-hook, off-hook condition. I'm currently off-hook right now, as you can hear in the background of the dial tone. Each time that I hang up and go off-hook, I get a different line finder, and once uh, I hang up, it steps the allotter to the next uh, line finder. And you can see other control relays operating. And this is set up that if one allotter is in trouble, then uh, the other one will be operational. And then, of course, it has the alarming relay and so forth. We're currently looking at the first selectors. Um, on my XY system. I have 20 first selectors because I have two single 100 line line groups. I'm currently plugged into this uh, selector switch right here with a test set and I would dial the office code which is 462 I just dialed a busy number so I've gone from the line finder to the first selector to a fifth selector into the connector switch and of course on the other selector I was doing a digit absorbing. On the first selector here of course we have level one for a toll to the camera trunk and level zero to the operator and then the remaining digits are used for EAS calls or interest system calls. This particular exchange of course is wired to my Western Electric step by step which is 377. In this case, I am doing digit absorbing on the digit 3 on this particular shelf right here. So depending on the office code dialing, the digit absorbing is being done in different parts of the office due to the uh, massive complexity of this particular exchange. We're currently looking at the connector shelf. Uh, I have two shelves of uh, 10 connectors. And uh, this is where the last two digits of a telephone number would normally be dialed. Uh, this is, of course, a TPL offer, so I would not have a third digit in this particular um, device. Some central office connectors would have three digits, and they'd have additional components in here. So I'm going to dial a digit of nine, six, and of course the relays were following the digits I was dialing. The light is letting me know that I've accessed that switch. And if I was, if the customer was to answer, the light would go dim, letting the technician know there was a uh, legitimate phone call through that part of the equipment. This is the back of a connector shelf. I'm showing you what the back of a wire bank on a Stromberg XY looks like. In this particular case, because it is a connector, that is a two-digit switch. If a customer was to dial, for an example, five zero, the switch would be stepped over to the fifth location, which would be technically a level, and then the last digit, the wipers, which is not able to easily be seen, would step into the bank. These very particular wipers here, the most closest to the camera, would be the 11th terminal. So if you dialed 5-0, it would be the 5th level by the 10th terminal. If in the case of a selector or um, a line finder, depending on how it was set up, 
you may be forced to the 11th position as a blocked call. Generally, you would not be ever on the 11th position. This particular piece of equipment here is an automatic number identifier. The purpose of an automatic number identifier is when a customer makes a long distance telephone call, they dial of course 1 plus a 7 or a 10 digit telephone number. The telephone number is being dialed into the tandem office and at the end of the 7th or 10th digit the tandem machine then requests a a and I from the end office. This particular equipment has a pulse generator that produces a high voltage pulse that is sent through the trunk, through the selector, and then it, through the connector terminal because the line terminal and the connector terminals are tied together. That fires a neon lamp on a printed circuit board which I'll show in a moment and that neon lamp will only one out of a thousand or so will operate. That sets the logic circuit in the out pulser to send the number that the call originated from. Stromberg had a unique feature for multi-party service. They had uh, what was called an option that could be wired into the system that would require a party digit to be dialed after you dialed one. For an example, you would dial one plus your party digit of one through zero, which did not have to correspond with the last digit of your phone number. It was an arbitrary digit that the phone company assigned to each line. Then you would dial your seven or ten digit toll number. When the far end, the tandem office requested the identification, then they knew which party of a multi-party service that the call was originating from. So as far as the toll office was concerned, it was a non-party line type call. In the Bell Systems equipment, they did not use that feature. So when a person in a Western Electric office would dial one plus a toll call, if they were on a multi-party service such as a four-party or eight-party, the operator would have to come on and ask for the number that you were calling from. That was an expensive, time-consuming task. With the Stromberg XY, they eliminated most of that with the circle digit. It was a pretty neat concept, actually. Here is a close-up of the neon lamps on the matrix card for the Stromberg identifier.